What up? It's your boy, The Incredible Man. And I know, I know I'm super duper late. But I just watched Kamitsu no Yaiba episode 17. Yes. And I knew it. I knew I, I knew with my mind and my powers that this was going to be a Zenitsu episode, man. I just knew it because last week it was Tanjiro and Inosuke the whole time. We got glimpses of Zenitsu, but this week it was a full on Zenitsu episode, man, except towards the end. But we got a little bit of backstory. We got a we got a little bit more in depth about Zenetsu, and we met his sensei when it came to the Demon Core, and it was his grandfather. And it was and okay, let's talk about the episode, man, because I'm all over the place. Okay, first off, man, it picks up right after last week's episode, but it shows Tanjiro and Enosuke um, kind of just wrapping up their whole little ordeal and. Tanjiro was saying that Inosuke, you know, you're hurt, you're injured, let me help you. And he's like, I'm not injured. You know, anything you could do, I could do better. You know, he's on that whole shtick like that. But then we shoot over to my boy Zanetsu, man. Yes. Oh man, this character is so cool. I love Zanetsu, man. But um then we get to find out that um, you know, he's still walking in the woods. And, you know, this whole episode, it was it had the comedic moments at the very beginning parts with Zanetsu, but then like once they got to the serious part. It got real serious like from that whole little scene even when he was interacting with the um spider demon it was funny but when it got to the serious parts it got real serious man but um he's still walking in the forest and everything and he's still making his way he's talking about some i'm gonna you know whenever i find um nizuko you know i'd plow a field for her i plow two fields two acres of fields for her and everything it was it was nice and i loved the comedy that zanetsu brings to the screen for Kamitsu no Yaiba. But then he gets a prick in his hand and he was just thinking that maybe he bumped into something or just a bug out there bit him. But as we later find out, it was one of the spider demon's minions and it turned people into spiders. Because as we know, Zenetsu kept walking in the forest and he came across a floating cabin, which we know is lined and stringed upon the threads and there was people hung outside the cabin and they were starting to morph into spiders. And I'm assuming he has done this to a lot of people because all of the itty bitty spiders with the human heads that was running around chasing Zenetsu, they were human then. So he poisoned them and they all, so that's a lot, that's a lot of people. But let's talk about this whole, this, this part of the episode that I was so entranced by, man. We get there and he tells Zenetsu that um, he's starting to turn into a demon. And we jump into a flashback for Zenetsu. But before we do that, um, there was a, a miniature flashback where we saw Zenetsu talking to the old man. And at that time, I didn't know it was his grandfather. And um, his hair was black. And I was thinking to myself watching this episode, I was like, well, why is his hair black? And then now his hair is like super yellow. But we got we got the information in this episode. So the flashback comes and we see Zanetsu getting trained by his grandfather and him feel like he's having a miserable miserable experience because his grandfather's beating him and, and and but he's doing it to train him. And then Zanetsu's trying to run away and he climbs up a tree and he's like, No, I don't want to fight anymore. But I do I, I, I've been training on my own grandfather and I just want to make you proud and everything. Did his grandfather got all excited and happy? And lightning strikes the tree. Okay. That moment was absolutely wonderful, man. Because that's where the yellow hair kicked in. That's where he got the second persona from. The lightning striking him gave him the... I'm assuming it gave him the second persona and the yellow hair, man. Oh, dude, it was so good. We got an origin story for Zenetsu. It's like, it's like, a, it's like a comic book type origin story man so it's very nice it was very very good then we get more in depth about like how it came to how um like he was always a crybaby but you know that's just the next to man that's that's part of his charm but um then we you know we see where his grandfather saved him from a girl tricking him and all of this other stuff and his grandfather continually to train him and then we flash back into the present day and him you know, being uh, climbing up the tree and talking to the demon, they're saying that you know, I don't want to turn into this little snake. I mean, a little spider monster or anything like that. And then they shoot back to another flashback, and we see some more stuff about um, 
I'm assuming it's the same thing as it was with Tanjiro, um, one of his grandfather's students, which had died at a certain rock. And that student is the one that was training him to get him to a better place. But he didn't look like he trained him at all. He was just demeaning him the whole time. But um, like with Tanjiro, where he met the other two or several um, others that was out there in that rock that was trained by his sensei that had already died. So that was that was a nice callback if anybody seen it. It was a very nice callback to some, some prior episodes that we've seen with Tanjiro. And I'm starting to think that that may be a reoccurrence from all the Demon Slayers. And I hope so. And that's something I wish they would touch on more. But um, then we jump back to the present and we see Zenetsu getting ready to faint. I knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. And I'm not upset that that's his whole thing to where that's where he utilizes and maximizes his whole power is when he when he faints. Because we saw the little the, the little life energy kind of leave his body. Then he fainted and fell down. And the demon's like, is he going to fall on his head and die? No, 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 no. He falls flips and catches himself well he starts to set his stance and then the demon spits some acid and he like flips and catches himself and he's still stuck in the first stance but then like the demon's like well every time i try to attack him he still goes back to that first stance and then we get another flashback of zanetsu saying that i'm sorry grandfather i don't i can't master the other techniques and he only knows this one but it doesn't matter it's such a cool and powerful technique but what his grandfather said was absolutely wonderful man he said you know how a sword is made granted he kept hitting him in the top of the head but you know how a sword is made you beat it and beat it and beat it until you get out all the impurities and he was like if you can't master the other techniques, you take the one that you have mastered and you hone it until it is perfection and you can use it like that. Because, okay, the first time he used it in the, um, when we was at the, the mansion, it was nice, smooth, and subtle. It was just done. But this time, I'm assuming this is like from where he honed it, it became absolutely fantastic. That's going to be my whole thumbnail cover because that scene was just fantastic when he when he oh man it was so good when he showed like a full honed skill of the it, it was like he got awakened in the skill it was so fantastic man that's why Zenitsu is my favorite character I love Inosuke I love Tanjiro I love all of them together as one big little companion group but Zenitsu is my go-to guy man this was a Zenitsu episode and then he comes and like he's just full force man and he comes and he's darting all around the forest and he slashes the demon's head. The demon, it happened so fast, the demon was still going and talking and, and his body hasn't d disappeared or anything. He was like, ah, I got cut by this dude. Are you serious? And it was it was great, man. And then he like, he wanted to die. And Chuntaro was, was there and crying. And um, did he remember about his grandfather? He was like, nope, nope, nope gotta slow my breathing down man it was it was fantastic i enjoyed it i thought it was absolutely fantastic then we get to tanjiro and inosuke tanjiro felt like he just needed to go back this way and hopefully check on zanetsu and inosuke was gonna go ahead and then we come across another chick and now i'm starting to think this chick may be the ringleader i don't know or, or she's very special because the father i thought the father would have been um one of the 12 demon moons but obviously he's not he's, he's just a, a, another strong flunky so either the chick is one of the 12 demon moons or the little boy is one of the 12 demon moons that's that's my guess i don't know i'm not a, i'm not a manga reader but um that happened the dude attacked them and the girl ran off and 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 Inosuke jumped back and tanjiro went to attack him and to use uh, another one of his techniques the water wheel one and Dude, he slashed the cut, but it didn't penetrate the dude's arm at all. It just, like, it, it, it left an indention a little bit, but, like, it didn't penetrate it or cut it off at all. So, I'm definitely excited. These these last three episodes, well, these last two episodes that I watched and next week's episode that's coming up, they are, like, like, the show has already, it was already, like, do, 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 do. But, like, it is steady. It's, like, it's, like, on a, it's jumping straight up. Every episode is better than the last episode. So, I'm super excited for next week's episode, man. But this is your boy, Nick Incredible. Don't forget to smash that like button until you can't smash it anymore. Comment down below, and I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of them and subscribe. But only if you really want to, man. And remember that anime matters, anime is greatness, and anime is life. Kaimetsu no Yaiba is wonderbar. Peace out, man.